this is Africa Hacker 101. So let's 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 uh, there's, there's a lot more sessions coming. So my name is Bright Gabriel um, Mogno. Um, I work with a company called Zentoba. Zentoba is a data science as a service company. SME security, cybersecurity statistics, 60% of small businesses fall victim to cyber attacks. And when that happens, they shut down within six months. They are. SMEs, are, SMEs have stayed a bit longer, startups might, be, have, might have been there for maybe the first one year or two years. But when they get hit by a cyber attack, in less than six months, they cannot function. I put this slide because people think cybersecurity or hacking only happens online. This is happening in real life too. All of these kits, I have them here, actually. I, ca I carry some of them. So this cable you see here is not your normal everyday cable. It suffers you to plug this into your, your, <laughs> your laptop right now. I can trigger anything about 50 to 100 meters away on this laptop. Trigger meaning, disable this antivirus, give him a Wi-Fi hotspot, put a password even, <laughs> connect to a, a hotspot that I've created, download a malware from outside and put it on this laptop, run it and actually close. That can take about 10 seconds to do. So it only needs 10 seconds of what? Distraction. Now, you are going to have mobile applications and web applications which will have possibly an open API or some API that is connecting to other services. The amount of APIs that are being constituted in Kenya is madness. Starting with which, which is the common API you ever use in Kenya? M-Pesa. It's the most common, it's the first one you ever use. The documentation of M-Pesa API is publicly available. These APIs are connected to backend systems, so the communication between your mobile application, that API or APIs that you're talking to other systems that are there, or even the third-party developer community who are consuming that API, will actually be the avenue to get into your backend systems. DevSecOps will be a whole session we'll have in the future because that's another daunting process that a lot of startups are facing, or SMEs are facing. So DevSecOps is development, security, and what? operations if you don't most people just do development and operations but if you don't put security into the into practice or in the middle you are losing a lot so we have quite a lot of things to cover so jesse we have quite a, a, a you might have to do this twice a month yeah so some of these things because of the business logic flow exactly even the business people talking about the user experience and the and, and the whole process of how their business is supposed to work can be the reason why your application gets to be compromised, lack of active monitoring, half of organizations don't monitor anything, anything that actually gets to see what is coming in and what is going out. There are open source uh, solutions that are out there and I'll show you some of them. To be able to monitor and say, who is trying to hit my server so many times, then why are they hitting and what part of, what part of my application are they hitting a lot? Majority of applications in SMEs and startups that I've seen are in plain text. Zero encoding and zero encryption. And I hate this whenever I talk to SMEs. And what they tell me? We have HTTPS. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean they have HTTPS? I mean, that's, the, that's, the, that's their level of encryption. And you know what they're using? They're using the very common um, HTTPS certificate, which is what? Let's encrypt. Anything that is free, what does that mean? You're the product. <laughs> Let's encrypt is free. I know it's a publicly available uh, kind of concept to make it easier for organizations and startups to have something free, but that thing being free is not that free. So encoding of actually applications is really important. Every single application that I see in Kenya, majority of them don't do it. Encryption of that algorithm or an, an algorithm put on that code that when it's transferring the data from one server to the other should not be able to be read, it should be jumbled up. If you can't do that, because sometimes most of the applications we have in organizations, it's quite difficult to perform that, please put some stop gaps. If my code number, actually, and I've seen this in an, in an insurance um, mobile application we tested, that I put my name, when I logged in, it gave me a result. That bright, your insurance details are one, two, three, four. But it gave me a particular ID. My ID number is, my ID for that is 002. Okay, I wish. <laughs> right? But now, it said, let's try 003. And let's see if it shows anything. It's like, oh, 003 does not belong to anyone. Let's try 004, 5, 6, up to 00, or 011, or 100. 
Now, Burps can allow you to be able to run to see how many of those results are actually there and the results of those people. So what does that bring to you? Information leakage. You can actually request for people's details without necessarily their permission. But if you put a stop gap saying, if this particular server requests twice or thrice or four times in the last, the last one second, block that from happening. Looking at this, the best practices for everyone and practices specific to the threat model. So threat model is basically a process which potential threats that can happen to you, such as tracker vulnerabilities that are there and, and absence of appropriate safeguards can be identified, enumerated, and mitigations can be, can, be, can be prioritized. That's basically it about your application and systems as well. And you think we're talking about application and systems, it's even the entire organization. People, processes, technology, there's one more thing, control. People, the processes that you have in organizations, the technology that you use it, and how the last, the last one is what? The controls to put in place. So without the control, the top three are actually useless. Where am I most vulnerable, attack, vulnerable to attack? Where are the most relevant threats that are there? What do I need to do to safeguard against those threats? So I'm just trying to put this kind of graph where you see the severity of the threats that are actually possibly going to happen to you and what is the likelihood of that threat um, going to actually um, get to you. Which brings me to two main things, risks versus impacts. There's some of the risks that you can find is access to client list when we do what I just talked to you about, customer credit card information, your company's banking details, your pricing structure, product designs, expansion plans, manufacturing processes. So just sample risk, right? What are some of the impacts you're looking at financial losses? Um, from theft to banking information, I'm just using the bank as, as, a, as an example in this, uh, in this particular case. High cost, of, high cost to, get, uh, to rig your network of threats, damage to your reputation after telling customers the information was compromised. Protecting your business against cyber attacks or cyber threats, there are very simple things you need to do. This is just a summary, general, high level. There's a link that is in the presentation which I will share with all of you, of which you can actually get a bit more in depth. But that link is a bit big. So this is a, bit, a little bit of a summary version of it. Employee cybersecurity awareness has to be done. You have to get your employees trained on cybersecurity or cyber resilience, which we talk about. Perform risk assessments. Get to know what is your threat level. Where are you going to likely going to be hacked in the next few days, or how exactly are you going to look at it? Looking at deploy endpoint security. The reason why I put endpoint security solutions and not <laughs> I love you. You want to tell them why? <laughs> we are done with antiviruses, guys. Antiviruses are dead. Why? Because our friends called Labu and the, and the likes will create. Uh, called Labu, Labu is, is, is another. I used to like creating malware, but Labu is on steroids. This guy will create malware that bypass every single malware anti malware solution, almost all of them. Sometimes they even infect themselves. <laughs> Have a vulnerability management solution in place. Systems out there that can actually scan your network and systems and say, these are the volumes of vulnerabilities that we have in our network. We need to understand how our network is doing. We need to understand exactly to see what is coming in, what is going out. The day that spike has gone from here to here, you need to be what? Start watching and see whose machine brought this attack in. When that support engineer who have been created, collecting all the logs of issues and everything, decides to walk away with that machine, what would you do? The collaboration you've been doing with the documents, all of a sudden, the person whose laptop you're using to, to actually edit that document decides to quit. What would you do? Which will bring me to the other parts of things like policies. A lot of startups don't have policies. So, what to look for in if you outsource some of the cybersecurity jobs to other organizations? Here are some of the things you need to look at. An independent assessment review and reviews that they have done, look at sample reports. Ask them for sample reports, ask them for the CVs of the guys who did the job, ask them for a portfolio of people they have actually worked with. Are we together? So please get to find out details about independent assessments they have done and the reviews they've done before. Because sometimes the job they're doing is not necessarily a technical job. It could be a legislative kind of work. Are we together? So I'm not trying to be technical, all technical here. 
looking at uh, and avoid cheap options so many people like to take shortcuts and i i i always find it interesting and i tell my my pal, my pal it's not here jimmy has not come here so a guy called jimmy who jimmy and seth i work with seth once in a while jimmy and i communicate a lot so jimmy and i do a lot of security assessment and when we tell people this is the cost of the security assessment they're like hey that is too much yes, we can't afford it but they tell you later the value of that application is worth two million kenya shillings but they don't want to pay three hundred thousand kenya shillings for that particular job so they don't understand the value or the people cannot communicate the value what did they say they say they said it's too expensive then when they get hacked the cost of that hack is going to take them another three months to actually fix cyber security is about being able to do two three and four you know how to protect yourself you have the firewalls and the lights you know your perimeter and the lights you know how to detect anomalies with your endpoint security solutions or the bit defender solutions or the microsoft solutions and the lights on the network level you know how to respond to them either we are plugging that machine out of network or you know have a team that can actually go to a computer and do some some commands and everything to get out of it that's like that's security cyber resilience on the other hand is being able to also add two more things how can i identify some of these threats or security issues that will happen to me before it happens and how do i recover just general safety for ourselves and for organizations that we're looking at things that you should do a lot your strongest password is not password with the numbers and characters alone your password is the spaces and don't use things that can be found about you online a lot of companies always put their company name and a few details of the numbers on their platforms and typical developer mindset what do they do the staging environment for any application they're developing is their company name 2020 21 2022 <laughs> as a username and password are we together and those staging platforms that you think nobody ever find it people will find them so if you're going to do something very sensitive as a startup which i know most of you do make sure you hotspot your phone as the phone to be able to use to be able to um, do a transaction or use a vpn please so that's the thing we used to design applications to never ever fail you have to design in a way that you can design you can recover very quickly you can't prevent every possible attack you will be hacked someday just a matter of time so think along those attack phases that assume that you have already been compromised key questions i'm not going to go through all of this but you can get to understand them later your risk appetite supply chain risk you what do you what do you fully understand your current vulnerabilities have you gone through them to understand and see that hey this is how vulnerable we are we need to start working on a resilient model and i put some links here this links is just to help you with tools and a whole checklist that you need to have i'll not go through them right now so with that i will say thank you I think I've talked too much. I will uh, leave the floor open for questions. Uh, my question is uh, actually a bit off of this uh, because uh, I'm already on this space, but my main issue is how do you sensitize maybe the management team or rather the people in charge in terms of make them see the importance of this thing without necessarily being too much on the cost effectiveness and saving uh, the resources. I think that that has been one of the most difficult things that CIOs or CTOs or CISOs, uh, even head of techs of any kind of, of business trying to get to communicate. I've done about maybe 15 board trainings on cyber security or cyber resilience, and that's always a challenge. So don't go tell your CISO, we have three hackings and they just stop there. You know, you have to show the risks and show numbers. If you don't connect the numbers and the risk of potential threats that can come in with the, the whole threat modeling, you will never understand. So tell them, look, we have one, two, three, four systems. We have A, B, C, D ways of getting to do things. If we don't get to actually secure A, B, C, D method by, by the method that you know as the expert, we are potentially going to lose this. So uh, I recently uh, met some guy who was using uh, WordPress commands and to do some kind of activities and business. Yeah. And then you don't think the reason is why you can't, uh, you can't 
I mean, you can have the application developed from the scratch, because the developers will need to find the facts and the systems. You can use? Uh, you can't uh, hire a developer to develop the application from scratch. Yeah. Because the developer will leave a lot of bugs in the application. Uh, so, what's your take on, the, on that? Are we saying from the developing from scratch, are we going to be for the new commands and integration? If you go to this website called ExploitDB, um, yeah, it's right there. It will show you a plugins that are actually vulnerable that somebody has already written an exploit code that you and I can download and run against that particular service and you get, you get, to, you get to compromise our system. Thousands of them are here. So, plugins are going to be there. So even you saying you don't want to hire a developer to do that for you is shooting yourself in the foot. Maybe not to develop from scratch because of the bugs and everything, but you still need a developer to be able to look at the development process and the security bit of it. Um, so that's really important. Um, so I would not say people should shy away and start doing it. And then why are you reinventing the wheel? I mean, they've done it for you. It's another website which makes it so easy for you to create a website. It's literally click and drag. It's literally click and drag. So anybody who's not even an expert in develop, software development can build the bare minimum and then another developer can come in now add a little bit more flesh or a little bit of look and feel for US, UI, UI, UX. So I would rather say people go with um, this kind of platforms, but be careful about the kind of plugins you use because some people intentionally even leave bugs in the plugins to enable them get into your website. Are we together? Yeah, so that, that's basically my take on that.